Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim's a place that does a pretty good job at feeling alive. The world offered by The Elder Scrolls V is rich in sights, characters, and history. However, something that can become boring after a while is traveling. Getting from point A to point B can become a tad monotonous after you've already done seven quests sending you back and forth across the entire province in a matter of days. One of the ways Bethesda tries to keep these journeys spiced up, for those unwilling or unable to use fast travel, is through random encounters. These are, randomly, spawned pre-scripted events that can occur at a number of set locations across Skyrim. They vary in the form of everything, from roaming bands of hostile mages to imperial soldiers just marching between forts. Some random encounters will force the Dragonborn to fight, others will provide an opportunity for trade, and some can even kickstart their own quests. What random encounters you find are subject to chance as well as your own character's progression, choices, and levels. Therefore, it's almost impossible to see all of them in a single playthrough. Regardless, some of these events can be really cool and definitely deserve to be seen. So today we'll be taking a look at five more rare, odd, and strange random encounters you may have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Part 3-ish. Starting off, we begin today's video a short sailboat's journey away from Skyrim itself, and instead on Solstheim. Here when traversing the trails or frolicking through the fauna, one may be approached by a very strange NPC. An odd individual by the name of Madman, sounds promising, will run up to and enter dialogue with the Dragonborn, wherein he'll start incoherently rambling about how he knows things, hidden things. However you respond, the conversation will somewhat hilariously just go around in circles for a little while, before the Madman finally gives up and just turns hostile. I can't get... I know things, hidden things, things you aren't supposed to know. You don't believe me. No one does. They don't want to. I don't want to either, but I can't help it. <laughs> They're in my head. No, that's what I'm trying to say. The secrets. They're in there. In there deep. Can't get them out. They're in my head. Uh, the secret kind. You don't want these things in your head. You don't! You don't! Now, to anyone who's dabbled in the Dragonborn DLC's primary questline, it's clear what happened to our poor friend here. He's somehow been exposed to a black book, one of the Daedric Prince of Knowledge, Hermaeus Mora's artifacts, that are said to contain near incomprehensible levels of knowledge, and drive unprepared people mad. And apparently those rumors are true. On the madman's body will be a note, appropriately titled Scribbles of a Madman, and it simply reads, quote, Black slimy fingers, black slimy words, black slimy book. Insert dungeon name here, black like the back of my eyes, but darker. Get these things out of my head. End quote. Reading this document will begin a quick miscellaneous radiant quest, leading you to that before-mentioned dungeon to clear it out and recover the book. Additionally, if you play your cards right when speaking with the deranged fellow, you can also get him to reveal the book's location that way, but he'll still be hostile and attempt to murder you to death. Oh well, at least we can ensure his insanity wasn't for nothing. Next on our list, we set our eyes on the chilly northern shores of Skyrim's mainland, specifically the Hold of the Pale. Now, the Pale has an especially interesting, somewhat unique package of random encounters, all related to ghosts. It's actually really cool. I'm definitely interested in doing a deeper dive into this whole phenomenon sometime in the future. It's possible to happen across ghostly children, the spirits of farmers, and more. Most of these ghosts will just disappear when approached. But perhaps my favorite of these paranormal experiences occurs at dusk, when one can spot a phantom donning ancient Nordic armor running about on the roads. If you walk up to the spirit, he'll just ignore you and continue on his merry way. But the real fun comes if you decide to follow this spectral character, as after a short while, he'll eventually lead you to an unmarked ancient Nordic burial ground, where a couple of very unfriendly bandits can be found. They're robbing his grave. The thieves will unsurprisingly be hostile towards the Dragonborn, which isn't the brightest idea on their part, and after you've overpowered them, you'll notice the ghost is gone, 
he disappeared as soon as you arrived. It's obvious what happened though. The spirit meant no harm, his grave was being ransacked, and he was just seeking help. By looting it, these bandits were disturbing his spirit. Funnily enough, at the bottom of the small burial chamber is a coffin that likely belonged to the Phantom in the first place, and you'll now be free to loot it. It'll contain some random leveled items. Stealing from the grave you just saved has some obvious ironic implications attached to it, but hey, at least the ancient Nord can finally rest once more. Coming in at number 3, this one's neat, because it's dependent on our own progression in a particular skill tree. After your character has reached or surpassed level 50 in the restoration ability, and unlocked at least one ward spell, it's possible that when inside one of Skyrim's hold capitals, you can find yourself tracked down by a curious Breton character, named Student. He'll explain that he's an aspiring student who desires to attend the magical College of Winterhold. There's just one problem. He's struggling with the admissions test. You see, as the player finds out if they themselves wish to join, in order to be let into the college, one first needs to be able to demonstrate their abilities with a spell. The college isn't picky or anything, pretty much any magical effect you can show them will do. But they do have standards nonetheless, and it appears this fellow is having trouble satisfying them. After explaining his unfortunate situation, the Breton will then ask of a favor. He wants you to help him get better at using fire magic. I want to join the College of Winterhold, but I need help with my wards. Can you teach me? Hilariously, he doesn't explain how he wants you to help him. He just asks if you will, and from there you can either say yes or no. If you agree, he'll then ask that you cast a ward spell, and explain that he's going to try and cast fireballs at your direction. Really? Oh, great. Okay, so first, you raise your ward and I'll throw a little spell at it. That way I can see the right way to do things. Now, if you really want to, at this point you can just up and run away. But the experience is usually fine. You deploy your magical shield, he throws a few fireballs for a few seconds, and then says he thinks he's ready, and thanks you for your assistance. Oddly, after concluding this whole interaction, rather than go to the college or just despawn like any normal character in a similar context would, this Breton student sort of just permanently started living in Whiterun in my game. And as far as I can tell, probably will for the rest of it. I think this has to do with Bethesda signing him a more generic AI package. But honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe he just got cold feet. For fourth spot, we've already dabbled into the paranormal once with ghosts in today's video, so why not poke that bear, or perhaps wolf, again? For when in the forests of the Reach or Falkreath, I found the area around Arkathams to be rather good for this. At dusk and the early hours of the day, one can spot what seems to be a normal farmer, just idly standing around. But the thing about looks is that, well, they can be a bit deceiving. Get too close, and the farmer will transform into a werewolf before your eyes. As one might imagine, he won't be friendly afterward either. The unique property about this encounter, what struck me the most, was that how these types seem to be specifically set to occur much more often in the southwestern corners of the map rather than anywhere else. The Reach is home to Hersene's Daedric Quest, that lycanthropy plays a central part in, as you work with, or against, another werewolf named Sindine, and ultimately can earn Hersene's Ring, which grants you such powers for yourself. Apparently though, as this encounter suggests, Sindine wasn't the god of the hunt's only subject in this region and its werewolf problem is far from solved. And finally, last on our list, we come around full circle, as our final featured encounter occurs back on Solstheim. Here, within the ancient ruins of Glindenhold Barrow, we can learn the story of, and face off against, the ghost of Hackneer Deathbrand. Legend has it, he was a fearsome pirate king, who once had domain across the Sea of Ghosts, earning him the nickname, the King of Ghosts. His brutality and evil were legendary when he lived, but now in death, his restless spirit continues to fiercely protect his burial site from would-be looters. After reaching level 36 and reading the book, Deathbrand, you'll be given a side quest to explore his grave and beyond, taking some of the pirate's lost treasure. Well, evidently, the Dragonborn isn't the only person on Solstheim with such a brilliant plan as one encounter that can be triggered concerns two arguing pirates that can be happened upon. One seems to be demanding that the other assist in her crew searching for Hackneer's long-lost loot, 
but the receiving pirate just isn't having it. We've got work to do. I'm not chasing that map. It's a fool's errand. I'm done. Leave me alone. Boss said to bring you back, or bring back your corpse. Is that so? Well, you'll never get that treasure now. Time to die! In the ensuing conflict as both turn on one another, the male pirate will pretty much always win thanks to his much better stats. Even if he is defeated, which will only happen if you help his attacker or there's some other type of intervention, no matter what, the winning pirate will actually be friendly with you. Clearly not interested in another skirmish. On one of their inventories will be a copy of that book, Death Brand. So you can pick up the quest and continue the search that they had originally started. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more strange, odd, and rare random encounters you may have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Part 3. Thanks for watching, everybody. Skyrim has an abundance of these world interactions, so which of the ones I've yet to cover surprised you the most? Leave a comment down below. Oh, also, I tried something a little bit different with the thumbnail of this video as I did the last one. Tell me what you think about those ones. I think they look a lot better, but I want to know how you guys feel. Anyway, as always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.